All right, hey everyone. Today I'm going to make a stamp for concrete. Uh, we've got some work being done outside of our house and we're gonna get part of our driveway redone and a sidewalk to our side um, of our house redone. And I'm gonna put our kids uh, footprints in there and I figured I want the date as well, or at least the year. So we're gonna put 2024. And instead of scratching it in with a stick, I'm going to try to make a stamp out of PLA. TPU might be uh, the better option here, but I do not have my TPU settings dialed in. And I really don't have a whole lot of time to figure it out because I think they're going to be pouring tomorrow. So um, I thought this would be an interesting video because it's not necessarily as straightforward as you might think. So um, hopefully you learn something. You know, in my videos, I kind of fumble around a lot because I learn as I go too, right? You're, you're developing techniques, you're developing ways of doing things. And honestly, after you watch this video and you're like, duh, Doug, you could have done this so much easier. Leave that in the comments so we can all learn. But um, okay, let's get started. So let's create a sketch and I want it on this bottom plane here. And I want to draw a rectangle that's going to be the size of the stamp. So you can hit R for rectangle or if you just click right here. Now I don't want the two point rectangle. You can see this little drawing. I'm going to have to click here and drag down. I want to do it from the center. Um, so if you come over here, there's a little box here, a little window, and I can choose center rectangle. So I'm going to click on the origin and somehow I got that exactly by 100 by 50, which is exactly what I want. But if, if you want to change this, um, you see the, the number 120 highlighted in blue. That means you can just type there. So I can type in 100 and then hit tab on the keyboard. And that tabs over to the other measurement and I'll hit 50 and then you can hit enter. So that's the size of my stamp, about four inches by two inches or 100 by 50 millimeters. So now let's create some text. And I want this centered. And with, with the text tool, you have to drag a box again. So the reason I made this box is, one, because that's that's where, how I'm going to extrude my uh, the base of my stamp. But that also gives me a place to draw a square for the text. So I can click on this corner, drag down, click on that corner. And we can up here type in 2024. Now, I think the text box remembers the last um, time you used it. So I believe when you open this up, if you've never used the text box before, it'll start like this, align left, align top. And so you can play with this. I want it aligned centered and aligned middle. So that puts it right in the middle of this box that we created. And uh, that might, may be a little too big of lettering. Maybe let's try 22. You can also come in here and change the font. I kind of liked what we just had. Where was that at? Arial Black. We'll just do that. And let's hit OK. I think that looks pretty good. Actually, let's, let's bump it up maybe to like 23. Just a little bigger. And we'll hit OK. Now, we can finish sketch, and the one thing I don't like about Fusion is how it handles text, and there's, I'm sure there's a reason for it, but you can't click on these numbers individually. It acts as like one surface or, or, or one face, so whatever you do to one, you're doing to all of them, and in my head, if I click on this and hit E for extrude, and let's say I just go up like... 10 millimeters. Um, I want there to be a slope on this, right? Or a chamfer. Um, because when I stick it into the concrete, now granted, I'm not going to stick it in very far. I want there to be a bevel on those sides so it slides out easily. And you can do that with extrudes. The problem is um, they can't run into each other. So this, this command right here, you can click on this little circle and, and drag it one way or the other. Um, or you can just do the taper angle. I guess taper is the word I'm looking for. So let's just try like five degrees. Typed in five here. And you see it's throwing me errors. Um, and I believe the reason for that is because the two runs into the zero. And um, let's see, actually, let's just see if it shows. 
Um, <laughs> doesn't really give me exactly. So let's go down to like four taper and there it worked. So why it wouldn't give me a taper more than four. Let's just try to go big. Let's just do like 10 and it allowed the four to do it, but something else. So you see, it's not working. It's doing something funky. So let's just hit cancel. So I want to try to work on these numbers, uh, individually. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit E for extrude and I'm just going to go up like 0.2, which is the height of, uh, the layer line on a printer. Right. And so now if I come up here, you can see I've got four individual bodies and now I can work on these by themselves. So if we, let's label these, let's go, that's zero. This is two, four, and two. So we're gonna, we'll, we'll reorder these here. So 2024. So there we've got, oops, that's not right. This two goes up front, this one goes below. So now they are in order. Okay. So now what we can do is extrude these individually and we can see if um, it makes a difference. Now keep in mind, this is a stamp. So you have to make sure you're extruding this in the right direction. We don't want to extrude it down. Um, well, actually, you know what, you could, but the, the problem with extruding it down is I want this to be the final size of my stamp. So I want this face right here to be the one going into the concrete, right? So I want to extrude up. So just keep that in mind, right? right? You have to kind of think about things backwards with a stamp. So let's click on that face. We'll hit E for extrude. And let's just go up like 10 millimeters. And that's probably more than we need. So let's just do eight millimeters. And let's try a taper angle of, let's say like eight. That worked, so let's go up to like nine. And you can see how I can do it more now. Let's go up to 10. And I'm just gonna kinda, let's go to 12. So 12 still worked, 13. 13 didn't work. I'm assuming 14 won't work. So it looks like 12 it is. So let's hit OK, and we'll just join it to the little body we already had there. That way we don't get more bodies showing up. So we can hide that. Actually, we'll just hide each individual one so we don't have problems. We'll just keep the one visible that we're working on. So let's hit E for extrude. Let's go up to 8, and let's try the taper of 12 again. And I got a error, so let's go 11, 10, and 10 worked. So you know what? We probably are going to have to go back to this last extrude. And we're going to have to bump this down to 10. So what I did there is on my history, I can you can go back to that last extrude. And I double clicked on it, but you can right click and edit feature and, and change it. So we know 10 worked for both of these. So let's go to the next two. E for extrude. We'll do 8 millimeters. Um, and then we'll do a 10 degree taper. That worked, we'll hit okay. Hide that one, go to the four. E to extrude. I'll type in eight right here for the distance. And then for taper, I will do 10 and hit okay. So let's make all of these visible again. And you can see they kind of run into each other. So the reason I was hiding these um, is because if you were to keep this two visible and try to extrude this four, it would want to join with the two and it just gets kind of messy instead of joining with this body. And so I was, I was hiding those and even this one clips in a little bit. So now we have a nice little taper. So now we can make the base of the stamp. And remember, um, this is the side that's going into the concrete, right? So if you're looking down on the stamp like you would uh, in real life, that will give us the correct orientation of those numbers. If you were doing it backwards, you might end up with text going the wrong way. So, so now let's create the base. So we can uh, create sketch, and we're just going to create the sketch right on the surface here of the numbers. You can pick whichever one you want. We'll just do the zero. 
and hit R for rectangle. And if you come over to this little window, there's a few options on how you draw that rectangle. I want to do it right from the center, since that's everything is centered around this origin. And we'll click on the origin, and then drag out. And let's go to our 100, and hit tab by 50, and hit OK. Now you could come in, we don't want these square corners. You could actually um, use the fillet tool and do this like that. Um, but I'm going to hold off on that because we can do that a different way. And so let's hit OK. And now we can select the surfaces. So I want to I select this box. And you see the circle didn't um, uh, select. So we have to hold Shift and click that. And then we can hit E for extrude. Oops, you know what? I missed, I missed this inner part of the circle too. So click the box, hold Shift, click the zero, hold shift, click enter. So the whole thing is selected. Hit E for extrude and let's just go up, I don't know, maybe six millimeters. That's probably too much. Let's just do three millimeters. And we can join here. We can just join everything into one body now. And you can see we're back down to one body. And then there is our stamp. And the reason I made this so thick is because I want to be able to get my fingertips along this edge. I'm, I'm only going to be pushing into the concrete, you know, just a tiny bit. This whole thing isn't going into the concrete, um, just a little bit. So that makes it so I don't have to put any like weird handles on the back of this stamp and it'll, it'll just print super easy. So there's my stamp and you can tell it's right. Um, you can't see it like this, but this is how we would use the stamp. And to verify that we did this correct, we can go up to this body. Let's just rename it stamp. We can right click on stamp, go down to opacity control, and you can pick any of these. We'll just do 70%. And you can see if we stamp that in, it's the numbers are orientated correctly. So that's a good way to double check just so you don't get yourself confused. So let's turn that back to 100%. Okay, so now let's make these corners uh, rounded because we don't need these sharp corners. So you're going to select the edge, hold shift, and click on each edge. If you accidentally click on a face like I just did, just click on the face again. You're still holding shift, and that will delete it. So oh, let's zoom in here. Why can't I select this edge? Okay. You can see all four edges are selected and we can just do a little fillet from here and let's just do maybe 10. And without hitting enter, you can rotate around to see how that'll look. And I think that looks fine. We could probably do more because we'll save some filament by getting rid of some of that corner. So let's just hit okay, that looks okay. And we can even go as far as um, tapering this so maybe it's easier to grab. So we can you can either click the edge first or hit chamfer then select this edge and maybe let's do two millimeters and hit okay and now that it's, this little edge will be a little easier to grip with our with our fingers to pull it back out okay you could probably leave it just as is um, but remember we've got that little two millimeter or 0.2 millimeter surface here. And you know, I don't know if that's gonna cause any problems. Probably not, 0.2 millimeters is such a tiny amount, but I wanna get rid of that. So we have the nice taper all the way up to the, to the top. So, or maybe the bottom, however you're referencing this. So let's do, so we're not gonna click on, we can click on offset, but um, you could click on construction and offset plane. But if you just hover over this, this is the offset plane. So you can click that click on this surface and now it's asking how you want to offset this and since this arrow is going up a positive number will move this plane up so we need to do a negative number negative 0.2 so i'll just type that in and hit ok and now this plane that we just selected is at 0.2 millimeters below the surface the same thickness as this so what we want to do here is go to modify split body because we want to split this whole body and the body to split it's asking us first so we can click on the body the splitting tool we are going to use the plane that we just created so you click on the plane and you can see the red remember in fusion 360 red means it's going to cut and so now we can hit 
Okay. And you can see, so let's hide the construction plan. So when you when you create that construction plan, if you go over to your browser here, you can see it cr creates a little folder here and we can shut that off. And I like shutting the actual plane off and not the whole um, folder off because if you shut this folder off and you forget to turn it back on and you go to make a construction plane, um, you get a warning because it's not visible, right? Because we have this whole thing shut off. So. Um, when you're when you're coming over here with like sketches or even bodies, unless you unless it's just real quick, you want to see it all. Get in the habit of not sh um, making the whole folder vis invisible. Do it do it per thing there per plane whatever. So, okay. Now if we go to the bodies, you can see it created all these four. So here's our original stamp. You can hide that, and this is the part that we cut off from that body. We split the body right. So we can hold. We can click here, hold shift and click the bottom and we can right click and hit remove. Let's turn our stamp back on. And now we have gotten rid now we've gotten rid of that little point too. And I don't know if it would be a good idea to like chamfer this even maybe probably it would. So let's just do that. Let's just click on these surfaces here just so that edge isn't quite so sharp. And remember to select multiple faces. You just hold shift on the keyboard. And let's just do a little chamfer, maybe like 0.5. Let's see if that'll do it for us. So there's a nice little 0.5. You could probably even go less than that, but I think that'll be good. That way that's not quite so sharp. Okay. And there is my concrete stamp. So I think I will uh, end the video here. And this is the orientation that it'll print, right? This will be on the bed of the printer and it'll just print up. Um, I will get this printed out again. I'm just going to print it in PLA and, um, sorry I had to cut the video there. Um, with this, uh, printed, I will take some video of me stamping the concrete so you can see if it'll work and I'll see if it'll work. I have never tested this. I have absolutely zero clue if this is going to work, but that's kind of the cool thing about 3d printing, right? You can just create things and test it out. And I guess if it screws up my concrete in a little spot, it screws up my concrete. Um, but anyways, the next part of the video will be me. Uh, I'll show the 3D print and then I will uh, show me using the stamp. Thanks for watching.